the Wellington Ironman and in this video I'm going to be doing a quick spills. Um, what we're going to make is we're going to make a purity seal. Um, these are used in the Warhammer universe um, predominantly on um, space marines and they're supposed to be a wax seal that is affixed to a warrior's armor and it has um, these prayer sheets or prayer scrolls that are attached to it with sort of incantations to the glorious emperor. Um, now these are actually pretty easy to make and there are a vast number of ways of doing it but really if you want to make more than one or two, which you probably do because they're kind of um, all over the armour, um, is you want to make a mould. Now the easiest way to make a mould is using silicon. And this is usually a two-part mixture um, where you put a very small amount of this catalyst in with a much larger amount of the um, silicon itself and it forms a liquid, a very viscous liquid that sets in the space of about 12 to 24 hours. Um, but before you actually get into that mold making phase, you actually need to have your master. So that is you need to have um, what you are going to mold. So in order to make the purity seal, what I used was plasticine. And I made something that looked like a wax seal using a round blob of plasticine that I sort of smushed into shape. And then I got a small Halloween decoration, a skull, and embedded it in the top of it. So I, at that point I had a sort of plasticine and plastic version of the purity seal. Um, what I then did was I put that onto a plank of wood and I built a box around it using four small pieces of wood. I then mixed up some of the silicon, poured that in, making sure it didn't leak out the edges by using hot glue. And after it had set, what I got was a block of silicon. Now, it might not look very special, but on the underneath, of course, what it's got is the negative of that master that I've made out of plasticine and plastic. So into this you can pour well, a number of different things really. You could use fiberglass resin, um, you could use urethane plastic, you could use urethane rubber, you could even use hot glue if you don't want to buy any of those things. Um, really the only thing that sticks to silicon and is therefore unsuitable for using is more silicon. Um, so with the ones that I've already made, these were made out of a red urethane rubber, which was quite handy really because it meant they were the right colour and they had a sort of glossy, um, shiny finish which looks just like wax. Um, I don't have any of that left unfortunately, so um, what I've used is urethane plastic. This is, this is hard and Actually, the reason that I made these was uh, not because I needed more of them, but more because I'd been making other things out of urethane plastic. Had some left over, and I just poured it into this mold that I'd got, so that I've got these left over. Now, all of that stuff isn't really that hard to do. Um, one of the um, parts that was a bit harder to do was working out how to get the text onto the cloth that um, needs to be attached to these wax seals. So that's really what I wanted to focus on on this video. So let's get into how you do that. Right, the first thing you're going to want to do is get yourself in front of a computer. Um, you're going to print out the text that you want to transfer onto your cloth. So. Um, what you'll need is obviously a, a computer, and but more importantly, you'll need a printer. And 
Bubble jet printers don't work. Laser printers are what you need here. So um, find somebody that's got access to a laser printer. Now to get your text, what you're going to need to do is, um, first of all, write out what it is that you want to say on your um, prayer scrolls. Uh, in my case, what I did was I took some existing um, prayers and odes that I found on a Warhammer fan page and I translated a few of them into Latin and kept a couple of them in English. And then what you'll need to do is you're going to need to mirror the text. Obviously, when you transfer this text onto the cloth, it will reverse itself. So if you don't mirror it, what you'll end up with is backwards text. Uh, now, the way to do that um, most easily is using Microsoft Word. In Microsoft Word, what you want to do is create a Word Art text box. Put your text into that Word Art text box, and then one of the options in Word Art is to flip the text to mirror it. So it's actually quite easy to do. Um, with some of them, I also added a little graphic onto it, the, um, the Imperius, the, the Warhammer double-headed eagle, and I think on one of them as well, I've got the um, chapter badge for my particular Space Marine. Um, now, I've actually got a whole bunch of these, um, just because sometimes when you use one of them, it doesn't come out quite as well as you want. So um, what we'll probably end up doing is doing a few of these and see which ones come out best. Um, a good tip is, if you can, try and run the printout through the printer twice. In other words, try and get a double print of ink onto it. The more ink you have, the better the transfer um, onto the, the fabric that you'll get. So this has actually been through the printer twice to get double the amount of toner on it. So the next thing you're going to want to do is get yourself your fabric. Um, this is just cotton. Um, an old t-shirt will work, anything will work really, but um, cotton's probably best. And you're going to want to cut a strip out of it. Obviously your strip needs to be a bit bigger than the text you want to transfer. We're going to use this one as an example, so let's get the... Um, Let's get the right sized piece. Uh, it's not that important to cut it out to exactly the right size at the moment, but I am going to, and that's just because it makes it easier to, um, to stick it down. So you're going to want to leave a little bit of space at the top for attaching it to the back of your um, purity seal. Now, it doesn't need to be particularly accurate because the idea with these purity seals is that they look a bit worn and a bit aged. I'll just cut this off the bottom. All right, so we're ready to go. What you're going to want to do next is you're going to want to stick this down onto your work surface and the reason you're going to do that is because in this transferring stage you don't want the piece of paper to be moving around because you'll end up with the words getting fragmented and, and out of alignment with each other. Now you can just use masking tape for this which is what I'll do. Okay, the next thing you're going to want to get is some acetone. Now. I couldn't get acetone in anything less than a 10 litre container and I didn't need 10 litres of acetone so I got some nail varnish remover instead. Now if you are buying nail varnish remover be careful because some nail varnish removers are now acetone free and therefore won't work. Um, nail varnish that does have acetone in it tends to be um, quite high concentration but do make sure that if you are getting some that it has got a reasonably high concentration of acetone in it or it indeed it is pure acetone. This has got um, about 80% in it and the rest of it's all kind of junk for making your nails look nice and smell nice which isn't necessarily a terrible thing. Now with this next stage you actually need to work reasonably quickly because acetone evaporates very quickly but what you're going to do is you're going to soak the paper in acetone and then you're going to use something to push down on it and it's that physical pushing down on it that will transfer the toner from the paper onto the cloth. The acetone dissolves the toner on the paper and whilst it's dissolved the, 
cloth will absorb it more readily than the paper does. And that's why this process works. Now you can use anything. Some people use the back of a spoon. Um, really, it's just anything that you can apply some pressure with. So I've got this small metal bar here that I can use. You can also use um, the scissors. They've got this rounded edge on. I can use that. Um, but you're going to have to work reasonably quickly. Make sure you're in a fairly well ventilated area um, because um, you're meant to avoid breathing the vapour. But um, yeah, let's, um, let's give this a go. Now I'm just going to pour some into the cap here really so that I don't end up pouring too much onto the um, paper. So it's all on, let's go. Now that is probably as good as I'm gonna get. I don't wanna go over it too much because um, the paper does move around as you're doing this and the more that you go over it the more the chances are of it moving around and you getting sort of a blurred finish on it. Um, also the acetone stops the glue in the masking tape from working quite as well and therefore the whole stuff, um, thing tends to shift around a bit um, once the acetone's been placed on it. So let's peel it off and see what we've got. Oh yeah, okay. So as you can see, that's come out actually pretty well. Um, you just need to wait for it to dry before you do anything else to it. But um, you can see how well that works. Okay, the next uh, step you wanna do is you wanna make these things look old. Uh, there's a heap of different ways of doing this. Um, you could use a tea bag a used tea bag that is a wet one and um, dab the tea bag on it and it makes the um, fabric look like it's aged. You could also mix up some uh, instant coffee granules with a little bit of water to achieve the same effect or indeed just rub instant coffee granules onto it. Uh, my preferred way is actually using a heat gun um, because it's just quicker and it means less messing around with tea bags. So I'll show you how that works. You just turn it on full heat and point it at it until it looks a bit brown and you can make the edges or something look a bit browner just by leaving the heat gun aimed at it a bit longer. Done. Easy. Use a lighter if you like as well to burn a bit way a bit more of the edges but I found with this kind of um, rough open weave cotton when you set fire to it uh, it tends to just go woof and <laughs> you burn away a lot of material very quickly um, so yeah that's it really just got to do another two or three of them okay final stage is just putting the um, scrolls onto the back of the seals um, super glue tends to stick reasonably well um, choose your favorite seal put that one on the front i'd suggest putting them on a slight angle from each other if you've got two um, just so that it makes it um, otherwise you'll cover up pretty much <laughs> the whole of the one that's behind it now um, i'm just going to use a piece of gaffer tape here just because um, it's a little bit easier and it will work just as well as super glue really to be perfectly honest That's it, we're done. One purity seal, easy peasy, huh? Okay, that's it for this quick build. Uh, I've got a few other ideas for some um, other quick build videos, but maybe you've got something that you'd like to see me do or that you would like to know how it's done. Either if it's something that I've done myself or if it's something that I've not done yet, uh, maybe I could still make a video on it. Um, just give me a shout. So maybe see you on the next video. Thank you.